Welcome back to the Hour View podcast. We are kicking off March with new episodes dedicated to individuals living with multiple sclerosis. March is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. My guest on today's episode is Marissa Poppins, the founder of the nonprofit Mysterious Miracles. Marissa shares her journey of living with multiple sclerosis and all about the work that Mysterious Miracles is doing for the residents of Colorado who are living with multiple sclerosis. I hope you enjoy this episode. This episode of the Our View podcast is sponsored by Mysterious Miracles, a nonprofit organization in Colorado that empowers the people of Colorado who are living with multiple sclerosis to thrive in their new normal by providing access to medical services and resources, assistance with acquiring personal mobility aids, and home retrofitting. To access these services, or to find out more about Mysterious Miracles and to donate to the nonprofit, visit their website at www.mysteriousmiracles.org, their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash msadultprom, or email team at mysteriousmiracles.org. Mysterious is spelled M-S-T-E-R-I-O-U-S. I would like to welcome everyone back to another episode of the Our View podcast, where we aim to educate, raise awareness, and change the tone of conversation about disabilities. March is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month, and today my guest is Marissa Poppins, and I am happy to have you join me today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, So can you share with uh, with me and our listeners, who you are. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Marissa? <laughs> yeah, so my name is Marissa Poppins. I live in Denver, Colorado. Um, I am a huge film buff. I love movies. Uh, and so I work with a couple different film festivals out here in Colorado. Um, I also love Legos. So I'm always either playing with Legos or watching movies while I play with my Legos. So it's just kind of how I roll. Um, and then in 2016, I started a nonprofit for multiple sclerosis uh, called Mysterious Miracles. And our goal is to uh, give people resources and assistance for medical mobility and home retrofitting needs. Um, a lot of times insurance companies uh, don't want to cover the cost of those three main categories. And so we just come in and help the best that we can to make sure that people are getting taken care of and get the things that they need to just thrive in their new normal. That's great. I, um, I, I love that you love movies. That's, uh, that was really <laughs> cool. Um, what kind of movies are your favorite? What, what genre of movies? Yeah, so my favorite genre is horror. And then after that, it's documentaries. I usually take one to two months out of the year and that whole month, I'll just watch documentaries. Um, so yeah, I love to like learn. I'm not good at reading. So I watch movies to try to learn new things. And so at least one month out of the year, if not two, I I just watch all documentaries, nothing else. That's awesome. I love a good documentary as well. I, um, I, I just, I I don't know how good it would be considered, but I just watched the Tinder swindler on Netflix. Uh, (laughs) Just watch that this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole hour and however long it was, my jaw was just on the floor. <laughs> like, like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I love that you said you, um, you know, using movies as a, a way to learn and, and learn new information yeah. about and documentaries are, are a great way to do that for sure. Um, so as I shared in, um, in my intro, I am focusing my episodes, um, in March for the podcast on multiple sclerosis. And um, as you mentioned, you started a nonprofit uh, dedicated to multiple sclerosis. And um, can you just share with us some uh, current statistics about multiple sclerosis uh, that that you're aware of? Yeah, so um, multiple sclerosis is more predominant in women. Um, Out of everyone that has MS, I believe it's one in four are females that have multiple sclerosis. Um, Where I live in Colorado, we have the most cases of MS in the US. Uh, One in 440 people in Colorado are living with MS. So it's kind of a crazy, crazy thing that I live in the state with the most cases of MS. So that's kind of crazy. Um, Also there's, for MS, there's 
different types of MS. There's the secondary progressive, which is a little bit more advanced. There's relapse remitting, which is kind of like a come and go MS. Like you'll have your really good days and then you'll have like a bad day. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. So nobody, I've never met anyone that has the same symptoms as me or as someone else as well. And there's 21 known symptoms for MS, but a lot of things that people experience are caused by MS, but they can't rule it out as an actual symptom of MS because there may be only five people or one person that has that, that symptom or, you know, condition that's being caused from the MS. So MS, like I said, it's a mysterious uh, disease. There's not, there's a lot we know, but there's so much more that we don't know about it and why there's so many different symptoms and we don't really know what causes it. And so it's, it's kind of crazy. Wow, that's um, very interesting that you said that Colorado has the most cases of MS. That is, uh, yeah. wow, that's um, really interesting. And it's like you said, Matt, yeah. you live there. It's <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I I was very excited to um, connect with you through our mutual friend, uh, Sean. So uh, she was very excited to share uh, your contact information with me and thought that you would be great for the podcast. And I definitely agree because uh, you. Uh as you mentioned, you started a nonprofit called Mysterious Miracles, and it's M-S-T-E-R-I-O-U-S for Mysterious, for M-S, multiple sclerosis, genius name, fantastic. Um, can you share with us how you came uh, up with the idea to develop uh, the nonprofit and uh, just share with us again, um, you know, what you do through your, your nonprofit work? <laughs> a friend of mine came up with it because I was like, I want something that incorporates the MS, but, you know, MS is so mysterious. Like we know a lot about it, but there's so much more that we don't know about it. And right. so it's just like the perfect name for an MS nonprofit. In 2015, I was diagnosed with MS and it was my first year of knowing and living with MS was just a nightmare. Um it was uh, right around the time that uh, Obamacare started. And so the insurance that I had at that time was not good enough. And so I was getting turned away from clinics and hospitals. And so I wasn't getting treatment. So my MS just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then um, because it just kept getting worse, I lost the ability to walk without assistance. So I was walking with a cane or a walker most of the time. I was missing a lot of work. And then that in turn got me fired because they didn't know how to deal with someone that had MS and had to take extra breaks and go into the doctor all the time. Um, I was, for that first year, I was having an MRI once a month um, to just monitor the MS because I couldn't get on a treatment right away because I couldn't afford the medicine out of pocket. Um, a normal treatment for MS is about $32,000. And so I don't know anyone that just kind of has that cash laying around. I sure in the heck didn't. <laughs> and so um, I just had to go a year without uh, treatment. I was on like a trial drug that did not work for me. And so, like I said, my symptoms just kept getting worse. And I had um, joined a like MS support group. And I was hearing the same stories from everybody in that support group, like, <laughs> yeah, I can't get treatment. My insurance isn't covering thing. I got fired from my job. You know, I struggled just to like get in and out of my house because there's stairs. And I was like, okay, well, what's going on that everyone has these same problems? Like, why is it that nobody's helping us? You know, and so I'd gone to the MS Society and they were not very helpful. And like the MS Society is great. Like they have a great purpose and a mission, but they are more on the research and finding the cure, which is we absolutely need, but we also need something that will help people today. Um, and so that's where I created my nonprofit is a organization that can help people today. Like you getting you that treatment that you need, getting you a wheelchair, walker, cane, so that you can leave your house and become mobile again, and hopefully get back to work if, if your body allows you to and making sure that your house is safe and accessible for you. So putting in wheelchair ramps, you know, changing the doorknobs on, on kitchen cabinets or your doors so it's easier for you to open, getting you a chair in your, in your shower so you can sit down so you're safe 
you know, while you're, while you're bathing and whatnot, you know, making little modifications to the toilet, all that kind of stuff, just making sure that you can stay in your home as long as possible. And like, just, you know, not have to, you know, go to assisted living or a nursing home because your house isn't functional for you while you have this disease. And so I just wanted to create something where I could help people today uh, and help them thrive. And it, it, so it, it just kind of took off from there. Um, I just focused on the three areas that I heard people have struggling with the most, which was medical, getting testing, treatments, medication, uh, equipment, wheelchairs, scooters, walkers, canes, and then your home, like making sure that your home is safe and accessible, that you can leave in and out and live functionally in your home. So, so yeah, that's, that, 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 that's how I came up with that. Yeah, and I think um, what you said, I think is very important that, um, you know, finding a cure is very important and necessary, it is. Um, it is. you know, for future generations. And in addition to that, you have a current population of people that are living with this disease who, like you said, exactly. need to function. They need to stay in their homes. They have to live life every day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have, they have to go to work. They have to, um, mm -hmm. you know, do activities of daily living as, as they're called. And yes. it's uh, and it's very difficult to do that when you have um, a diagnosis uh, such as MS, because sometimes, you know, you're not able to work as long a 40 hour week or a full time job or you're not able to work at all. So money might be a little tight for you. So to have a, a, a nonprofit like yours is, um, you know, is very beneficial and very helpful, I'm sure, to those uh, who are living with MS. Um, yeah. Can you um can you share with us like what area do you serve? Do you just serve the Colorado area? Is this uh, nationwide? Right now we're registered in Colorado, but we are able to help people in other states. We've helped people in Pennsylvania, Nebraska, um, Kansas, California, so all over. We're just not registered <laughs> in all states, so it's tricky with getting like donations from other states. But I can help anyone in any state, honestly. Right. Um, and my goal is to eventually be registered in all states. Um, we're hoping to get two states added to our registration this year. Um, so yeah, we can we can honestly help anyone. Um, it's just a matter of you know they get in touch with us or um, and let us know like what their needs are, what their challenges are, and we can like point them in the right direction of resources that they have in their own state if it's not Colorado or resources that we can help with from Colorado, getting them to their state that they're in, if they're outside of Colorado. That's great. Um, and I, I wanted to ask that question just to, because um, I, I, I was very much sure that even if you couldn't help, I'm sure that you would know places where people could go exactly. in their own yep. states. Yep. Uh, and it, it's yep. sometimes finding that first place is the most difficult like where do I you know where do I search so if people can yeah. come to you um, as a, a first resource a first step uh, you know I think that that can be very helpful yeah. to um, to very uh, very many people and um, for those uh, listening or, or watching on YouTube can you share with us where they can find you how they can contact you whether it's social media or a website email address and whatever else you would like to share <laughs> Yeah, so our website is mysteriousmiracles.org. Um, you can, if you need assistance, we have an assistance application on our website that you can fill out and let us know where you need help and we'll do our best to help you and get you the resources that you need to, you know, thrive. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. Uh, our, it's facebook.com slash msadultprom. And you can contact us through either one of those, Facebook um, or our website. And then, or you can directly call me. Our phone number is 720-739-0063. Great. Um, so I will um, make sure I put all of that information in the show notes and, you know, definitely uh, share that information with everyone. Um, and before we go, um, can you share with us, you just mentioned the adult prom, correct? Yeah. Can you please share yeah. with us what the adult prom is? I think it's a fantastic idea. I heard a little bit about it, but I would love for you to explain um, yeah. a little bit more. 
Yeah, so I'll give I'll give the full backstory on it. So when I got diagnosed with uh, MS, I got really depressed, and my friends like were trying to cheer me up. So like we're gonna throw you a party, and you have to come, but you have to like help us plan the party. And I was like, okay, whatever, you know. I'm just like <laughs> pissed off at the world. I have MS, and no doctor can treat me right now. So I'm just like whatever her like let's just, so like let's just make it an adult prom whatever like that sounds simple <laughs> and they're like okay so then what do you want us to have at this party and so I'm like well we got to have music I guess people are going to want to dance we should probably get some food and drinks and it was just weird because I would tell people like that I was having like the celebration party to, to like just remind myself that I can keep living like this isn't a death sentence for me and so I would tell my friends that I was having this adult prom they're like oh well I got a friend that works over at Coors. Do you want a couple kegs of beer? And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. And then another friend be like, you know, I own that wing shop down the place. Do you want me to bring wings? And I was like, okay, yeah, bring some wings. And it just kept <laughs> snowballing like that. And then eventually people were like, you know, I got these gift cards to uh, a Rockies game. Do you want them? If you could raffle them off. I was like, okay, yeah. And I just kept, people just kept donating stuff for like, drinking eating raffle prizes and whatnot and it was just crazy to see it and that kind of got me more excited about it too and by the time we had the event we probably had a hundred dollars worth of wrap like a hundred items for the raffle and silent auction <laughs> like great like trips like to mexico the caribbean wow. like, i was just like holy crap it was crazy and we had 60 people show up we raised uh six hundred dollars and i gave it to the ms society at that time because i hadn't created the nonprofit yet and so i was like all right cool that was fun and everybody had a great time and like months go by and uh people are like texting calling me like hey are you gonna do that adult prom again next year i was like i don't know you know it's kind of just like a one-time thing i'm still kind of depressed you know just like trying to survive and they're like well you should do it again like i got another person that can you know bring such and such I'm like, okay, cool. I'll think about it. And so then I started looking at what it would take to start a nonprofit. I had started different businesses before when I was younger and it was pretty simple. And I was like, a nonprofit can't be that much harder. Uh, well, I was wrong. It's a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> the application is like 60 pages more than right. the LLC. So I was like, oh man, this is crazy. But I had friends that could help me out and we got it started. And so the next year, so 2000 um 16 we had our second uh adult prom we had 160 people show up we raised uh 1200 and i was just like holy crap and then it's just grown from there getting bigger and bigger and raising more and more money but essentially what an adult prom is it's a it's a chance for adults to relive redo and reimagine prom we encourage you to spike the punch bowl uh we have food we have games we have a photo booth. We have a caricature artist that comes in and does the caricatures for people. We have a VIP, we've created a VIP lounge for our big sponsors. So anyone that donates $500 more gets to go into our VIP lounge, which has even more ex exclusive drinks and food in there. And then they get like a little gift bag to take home of a bunch of stuff. Um, and then we always have a theme for our adult prom. And this year's theme is gonna be 1920s gangster gala. Um, oh. so it's where the, the VIP lounge is going to be kind of like a speakeasy. And, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's good. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that. And we always decorate real big and yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. And we have like casino games there as well. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's a chance for adults to relive, reimagine, uh, or redo prom. So it's, there's no awkward standing in the corner, you know, and right. we'll encourage you to, like I said, to spike the punch bowl. So, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. And it sounds like a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time. And oh. then, uh, so yeah, and then uh, anyone with MS gets to come in for free. We also provide transportation for those that have MS if they're not able to drive uh, because it's the one night that we hope, it's one of the many nights we hope that someone with MS can like just forget about their MS for a little bit and see that their community is here to support them and just have fun. And so we, we make it so that there's no excuse for them not to, to be able to show up. That's so great. And I'm sure it is much needed and appreciated by so many people. I, yeah, um, people love it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a great idea. Like I said, I heard a little bit about it, but I'm so glad you had a chance to really explain it. <laughs> Yeah, Sounds like a such a great time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Oh, wow. So Marissa, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you having this conversation uh, with me and helping to raise awareness and educate about multiple sclerosis. I think it is a very um, important topic that needs to be talked about. And um, I'm glad to have had you on to uh, discuss this and to share about your, uh, your nonprofit there in Colorado. So I wish you all the best and thank you. Uh, thank you again for your time. Yeah, thank you for bringing awareness to MS. We need it. So it's, it's, it's a disease that people know about, but or they know of, but they don't know about. So the more we can educate and bring awareness to MS, I think the better we'll be off. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I have um, my stepfather, he had MS and um, have some other relatives who have MS. So like you said, it's, um, you know, I, I know about it. I don't know everything about it, but I had a chance to um, learn a lot more about it uh, because of my stepfather, um, you know, when he was living with it, he has since passed away. But, um, you know, so so I think it's um, just always important to, to talk about things and to, uh, again, raise that awareness and educate people about uh, different diagnoses and different um, the, the ways that it affects people differently, because it's not all the same. As you mentioned, there are certain things that they can identify as being related to MS. But, you know, if you have another symptom that isn't recognized, <laughs> uh, you know, it's definitely yeah. important to um, to learn all aspects or as much as possible as we can exactly. about uh, a diagnosis like multiple sclerosis. So I appreciate you. Um, offering your uh, insight and and your knowledge uh, about this and again wishing you all the the greatest and the best uh, for you and your nonprofit there in uh, Colorado and when I get out to Colorado I will be uh, visiting hopefully I can come around the prom time because that sounds like a good time yes, please come to the prom you'll have so much fun you'll have so much fun I'm gonna crash you gotta the get prom. a caricature drawn of us together yes yes definitely <laughs> I'm coming to crash the prom, so it's. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you, please do. Please encourage that. Encourage it. Oh wow! But you have a great day, and uh, it was great to talk to you. And I will uh, be in touch with you soon. All right, sounds good. You have a good rest of your day too. Great, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I want to make sure that this podcast is as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions or any topics you would like for me to address in an upcoming episode, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Our View for Life. That's O-U-R-V-I-E-W, the number four, L-I-F-E. You can also email me, ourviewforlife at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.